So first, who am I? Um, Co-founder and CEO of FundThrough. FundThrough is a marketplace lender for small business loans. We reduce invoice payment terms from 30, 60, 90 days down to 24 hours for growing businesses that sell to other businesses. We're seed funded, and as Alex alluded to, uh, this is sort of my, my third startup, but the first that is outside funded. So, how did I get into the New York Times? Well, I'm gonna give you a quick rundown and then I'm gonna talk about five lessons that I learned about this. Uh, the first thing is I read an article that was posted on LinkedIn by a journalist uh, for CFO Magazine, which is something that really gets my heart beating and probably no one else in the room. Um, but the, the article was a really insightful article and I decided to reach out to the, the journalist and provide some feedback. Um, I then realized that LinkedIn was very valuable to me so I wrote a post for the Huffington Post about the power of LinkedIn for small businesses. Well, unbeknownst, uh, unknown to me, uh, somebody within the LinkedIn corporate PR group uh, tweeted out my Huffington Post post, and coincidentally, a New York Times journalist was working with LinkedIn and looking for people to write about. So I spoke with the New York Times journalist and then got into the New York Times, and we'll talk about how exactly soon. So lesson number one, look for ways to be helpful. Karma is awesome. So I read this article from somebody else who posted it onto LinkedIn, and I didn't expect anything in return. I thought that I can add some value to this journalist so that when he continued to write about these types of stories, he would um, hear from somebody who was in the industry and, and understands uh, what he was talking about. Uh, within 30 minutes of emailing him on LinkedIn, he reached out to me and said, awesome feedback, really appreciate it, would love to talk to you. He called me up, spoke to him. Uh, he then said, I'd love to write an article about what you're talking about. Um, I said, great. He wrote an article, that article ended up being one of the top lead generators to my website and was one of the top articles on his website, cfomagazine.com and it was there for a very long time, so it was very beneficial to me. So. I didn't expect anything in return from that initial reach out on LinkedIn. I did get something that was immensely valuable. Karma's awesome. Use all available tools. I go on LinkedIn every morning for about five minutes and just scroll through and see what everybody is up to on there and see if there's anything that can be helpful. If I didn't embrace social media, if I didn't embrace LinkedIn, if I didn't embrace blogging, I wrote this blog that was then picked up by Huffington Post. If I didn't embra embrace social media, then none of this would have happened. So use all available tools, all of them are free. Be polite and courteous, this one I love. So the person from, Link, from LinkedIn just sent out this, uh, this tweet, really cool success story, how LinkedIn helped my business on Huffington Post by me, Zillity, and uh, a link to it. That's awesome, but that's usually where it ends. But I did one, last, I did one more thing. I wrote to her, I said, thanks for the tweet. It took me about 10 seconds to write. I'm definitely a fan of what you guys are doing over there at LinkedIn, keep it up. So what did she do? She wrote right back and said, cool. As it turns out, this person is working on a story right now that she might be able to use you for. That third tweet would never have happened if I didn't just say simple thank you. People go out of their way to do things for you. She tweeted her that story to 5,000 of her followers, which is a lot for in my industry. So that was very helpful. Keep your eyes open for opportunities. That's the, the key thing. It took me no time, it took me no cost to do any of that. It just took me a little bit of time and a little bit of hustle and monitoring social media, monitoring Twitter. Every time I, I put out a, a, a blog post or any other piece of content, I always make sure I follow up on it and uh, blast it around as much as possible. There, you never know who's around the, the corner who's there to help you. And stay even keeled. Uh, so when I finally got noticed that the New York Times was gonna write uh, an article about me, um, I got really excited and the guy interviewed me and I spent about 20 minutes on the top of, of the article and the rest of the time, about 40 minutes talking about the business, he got really excited and then nothing for about a month. And then a month later I got a call from a random journalist who said, hey, I'm a freelancer, I'm working for the New York Times, I wanna come in and take a picture. I thought, awesome, finally it's happening. He came in, took a picture of me, Nothing happened for another month. And then sure enough, it showed up there. So what happened as soon as I saw it on the New York Times? I then wrote an article, how to get into the New York Times, and it got blasted around. So 
That's the end. Uh, I, I have zero time left. I was going to just pitch one bonus lesson, which is always be selling. So if you know a small business owner who's selling to high quality customers and needs working capital, come talk to me. I'm at Fun Through. Here's all my details and my awesome team back there. We're available to help. Questions? Nope, this was all, did I hire a PR company to do this? No, this was all organic. This was not done by a PR company. And now actually, uh, one added point is that now I have relationships with at least two journalists, the New York Times journalist and the CFO journalist, who will answer my call. If they may not write about me, but they'll at least answer the call the next time I call them. Based in Toronto, yes. Uh, Fun Through started last summer. We launched in June of 2014. We've got seed funded in February of 2015. Uh, Real Ventures out of Montreal led our seed round. With a bunch of awesome angels too. Sure.